55. So that's 55 deals between you and your associate between yeah. now and Jen. Yeah. Hey guys, so welcome to episode two of the Lifestyle by Design podcast. I've got Jason De Felicia. Uh, from Di Felice, <laughs> I shouldn't know how to pronounce that, I'm, I'm Italian, um, from ABC Homes. Uh, it's the second per, uh, second rep from ABC Homes in a row, but there, there is a special reason for that. Um, we I had a chat with Jace a month or so ago, and um, it's the first time we'd met, and he actually reached out just to, to meet, say hello, um, and, and network, basically, which I thought was really, really cool, um, putting yourself out there like that. We got talking about his uh, results year to date, and um, mate, I reckon the numbers that you've done year to date are probably better than anyone I'd ever seen, even at the peak of our market two years ago. So you're achieving some absolutely phenomenal success, and um, mate, I, I just thought that would be great to have a chat to you today and just talk about how you've gone about it. Beautiful, thanks, so, I appreciate it. Yeah, T- mate, tell us a little bit about how you got into the industry. Um, it's always interesting to find out how people come across this industry. Yeah. Um, originally, I started, I was an electrician straight out of school. Yeah. Um, had a, a back injury that made me sort of veer a different way. So then I started... Were you, were you working... Do you have your own business or were you no. working for someone? Yeah, I worked for a big commercial mob. Yeah, so I was cool. in the city on high-rise buildings and stuff like that. Um, transitioned into a sales role for a solar company. and wanted to keep the background of electrical yeah, and nice. utilise it. And then did quite well there. Was that, was, that, was that during the whole solar boom when the government rebates were going? Yeah, 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 yeah did cool. it for about 18 months. I had a friend who was, who was working with a solar company and, he, and uh, we, used to, we never used to see him. We used to say, mate, what, what are you doing? He's like, I'm building my empire. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it must have been. Must yeah, have been no, it, was, it was a good time. Mm. But it just wasn't really for me, that yeah. industry. So yeah. um, a position came available to start underneath someone else as a cadet at ABC. Yeah. And it was in the southeast. Which how did you find? Were you looking for something different or...? Yeah, I was, I was looking for something different. Yeah. Uh, I started under Steve, mm. and then after a short period, I, a position came available out here, mm. became a consultant, did quite well again, mm. um, and then got given another two displays in Roxbury Park to manage, so now I've got three, yeah. and I've got two assistants and, and a cadet who works under me, so it's, it's quite good. That's cool. So you, you're, pretty, you're pretty well supported, which is fantastic. Yeah. How is it managing you know, cadets and, and associates and things like that? It's good. It's, it's, it was quite new to me, but I always wanted to sort of move in that direction. Yeah. I think it not only work-wise, but personally develops yourself yeah. into management, yeah. I guess, eventually, if that's the way I want to head. Yeah. Um, it's good. I've got someone who's really eager to work in Rockford Park. He's, he's quite good as well. So. Yeah, it's, it's going well. Mate, I, I've, I've um, uh, looked for cadets and, and the thing with cadets is that you know, every now and then they move on because yes. they have their aspirations yep. to be sales professionals. So did you, did you find those cadets yourself or did, the, did ABC help you to find them? No, any, I found it any, any tips or advice on, on you know, sales consultants out there yep. looking for, for cadets? How to go about it? How to find someone who, who yeah. is good? Is good. It's funny that you say that. Um, I did have a cadet, and I got rid of him quite quickly because he was late four days in, in a row. <laughs> so then, um, like you say, how I reached out to you just to pick your brain a little bit. This this young guy, Josh, was not young, the same age as me. Yeah. He used to work for a, a, a land a land office and a builder. Yeah. And he used to pick my brain. Yeah. So I thought that was quite you know quite unique. Someone coming up and asking me questions what, what I'm doing. Yeah. And I thought. If he's doing that already, yeah. he would make a perfect consultant. So we sort of set him up now, me and my sales manager, Dave, Dave Shorten, who's, who's quite cool, we're good friends as well, yeah. to, you know, after his period of six to 12 months, he will go into a consultant role. So we've sort of set him up to go into a consultant role rather than just saying, you're starting under me um, and no path for him. So he yeah. knows his path yeah. and he knows where he's going to end up. And, and I think that's, that's an important... Uh, part of keeping key people is yep. to identify a clear path for them, right? Yep. You, you, you mentioned that he came and approached you just to just to pick your brain, yep. mate. Wh- what is it? What is it? What is it about someone, or, or what? How did you learn um, to do that? You know, I, I I tend to believe sometimes in this property sales industry, there's a lot of ego. Yep. Um, there's some consultants that um, uh, you know talk talk a big game and yep. and you know and maybe their results aren't as big as, as what they're yep. leading people to believe. Um, but there's also, I, I find that there's 
there's a hesitancy to share information as well yep. amongst um, peers, yep. you know, even through competitor builders or competitor land estates. Yep. Um, but I think that's an important thing. I think I think you know the the more knowledge, the more that we can share, the more networking. I think the better that we can all be. Yep. Um, especially during difficult times. So yep. what, what is it that? Um, you know, how did you learn to do that? Who, who, where like, did that come from? I just sort of try and model people that are doing well like yourself. Hmm. So I find out who's... Right. I find out... I'll fix you up that one. <laughs> um, I find people like fascinating who are high achievers in the industry. It doesn't have to just be new home sales. Yeah. Like people in real estate, for example. Like I've got some family friends who are doing quite well in that. And the training that they sort of get and the, the, the lengths they go to to sort of track leads over a 10-year period, yeah. five-year period, not just, not just a one... One week, two weeks, and then if you haven't touched base with them, it goes missing. Yeah, those kind of people fascinate me, and just I know I'm I'm doing quite okay and pretty good for for the market, but I can always I feel like myself I can always be doing better. Yeah, what can I do better? We'll we'll, we'll get to your number yeah. in a minute, year to date. But just on that, I mean, uh, this, this might be controversial as well. But do you think real estate agents work harder than land and builder reps? It's a hard question to answer. I'm not too sure. I just think it's a different. It's a different model mm. how they go about their um, the whole the whole thing, but I, I do think I wouldn't say they work harder. I think that the new new home sales consultants that work just as hard. I think it's just a different model. I think they can both take a bit from each other. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I, I I think it's the whole with a real estate agent. There's for for them to get listings, they have to go out there and they have to find those yep. listings. Yeah. So they have to be hungry for for new listings. Yeah. I was talking to someone recently who went from property management into um, a sales role or a sales assisting role and they, they don't have any listings. They don't have a fresh supply of listings and that's difficult because if yep. you've got nothing to sell, yep, that's right. there's nothing to do. Oh, correct. Um, yeah, so I, I think, I definitely think that land sales guys, new home builders could definitely learn something from that part of real estate for sure. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. I sat down recently with a family friend of mine and I just I was doing the same thing, just picking his brain. Now I've got some tips off him, um, and it's things I, I didn't think wouldn't enter my mind to do in, yeah. in, in new homes. So, mate, this is the second time that we've been doing a podcast, and the lights have gone off. How do we? How do we... <laughs> here we go. The back here. Okay, the sensors here. Cool. Well, that's it's a tick for energy efficiency <laughs> in an ABC home. So, um, yeah, go on. So, just elaborate on those things then. What... So, like. I think there's so many things that I'm looking to implement in my business and that they do in theirs. So like, example, a letterbox drop it would cost $150 to yeah. put a thousand. There wouldn't be too many that would be targeting certain areas. I think real estate agents that target areas, yeah. not just go after everyone. Yeah, yeah. And once you find your patch and sort of work that area, yeah. I think you might. My opinion is you'd probably receive bigger results. Um, and that's and that's what they do. So, mate, you you just said something um, that I'm not sure if people notice, but you just said my business. Yeah. Now, for the record, you're employed by ABC Homes. Yeah. But you see yourself as your your own boss. You see this as your business, right? Yeah. Definitely. That's why um, I like working for the company. Like it's it feels like it's your own business. With with our company, we don't get over over micromanaged. It's yeah. Like we're guiding you in the right direction mm -hmm. and. Here's the resources, which, yeah. I, which I love. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I do consider it as a business. So. Mate, and, this, and this, I think the, the important thing is, and, and you know, I've always, uh, you know, one of the, one of the, you know, Louis, if you're watching, thank you. Um, my first, very first sales manager basically said to me, you need to sit, you need to look at this as your business. Yeah. Um, and I remember we were walking through, um, we were walking through the estate one day, and he, he bent down and picked up rubbish and put it in the bin. Yeah. And he goes, you know, this is my, this is my, I, this is my business. Yeah. He goes, if there's rubbish on the floor, I pick it up because it's a reflection of my business. Yeah. No, it makes sense. Um, and that stuck with me from from day one. Um, and that's something when when dealing with associates and things like that that you you try and impart yeah. that ownership and that responsibility model because at the end of the day, you can the sky's the limit. Yeah, you can true. earn what you want to earn in this industry depending Correct. on how much you put in um, you know so that, I think that's a really really key point yeah definitely yeah, yeah so so tell us mate how, how many deals to date how many deals from January 1st yep. to now so I've done about 40 on my own and then with my associate 
He's done 15, so 55. So that's 55 deals between you and your associate between yeah. now and Jen. Yeah. And, um, you know, this is in, in what people would call a, a, a difficult market. Yeah. Um, I think it was comes it stems back from servicing like a, a good network really, really well consistently. Yeah. Um, I've got some, some people that I, I deal with that we, we sort of refer business to quite a lot. And we just sort of look after each other over a long period of time. Yeah. And then, because I've got you get so many houses under construction now yeah. each month, if you're servicing them well as well, now you're getting referrals from their brothers, their cousins yeah. internally. So it's just sort of stemming from, how long have you been doing this? How long have you been a sales professional? Not sales associate, but sales professional? Uh, about two years. Two years. Yeah. And I, I, I dare say you'd be probably one of the best performing sales professionals going around at the moment. So that, what, what, what other industry can you, can you get into and within two years, be basically at the top of that industry. Like, I, yeah, I pinch myself every day to, yeah. be, to be lucky enough to, to be selling land and, and to be dealing yeah. with home sales people. You know, they say that you need ten thousand hours to, to, to master a craft, yeah. but this is one industry where I think you can you can you can generate results much quicker. Yeah. No, I definitely agree. That's what sort of make, make drawing me to this industry. Not only you're running your own business, but the sky's the limit. Like you yeah. said for any potential um, and depends on how hard you want to work. If you want to work five days a week, yeah. you'll see the results from that. If you want to work seven days a week, yeah. well, you're obviously going to make another 100, 200 calls and you're going to see more results from that. So, I, think, I think that's the key point. Yeah. Right? Like, it, like everybody has the system there for them to be able to succeed. Yeah. How well you perform depends on the work ethic. Yeah. I mean, how much work you're willing to, to put in, I guess. Yeah. yeah, I think it's just come back from before you asked me what I sort of did to sort of get to where I did. I think it was just starting habits of getting in earlier, staying back later, mm. working the days off. Mm. And then now if I have to work Thursday, Fridays, which we, I do consistently, mm. it's not really a thing anymore. Mm. So I'm not working my day off, just I do that. That's my week. Yeah. So I try, I'll, I'll probably work six to seven days here. If I do one, it might be one at home, but if not, I don't really yeah. care because it's just my normal work. So, so, so let me ask you a question, right? It's you, you hear it all the time, you know. Do the one percenters. Yeah. Get in early, leave late, make the calls, make an extra call. But what drives you? What What is it that motivates you? Because at the end of the day, there's got to be something pulling us to work harder, to put in the extra hours. Yeah. And it, um, you know, I'm sure the money is fantastic, but yep. it's not always the money. What What do you? What is it? What is it that motivates yeah. you? Where, where do you get that? motivation from and and for people watching who you know are feeling a little bit yeah you know um dejected in, yep. in, in relation to how the, the industry is going or yeah, yeah. how the market's going what advice would you give to them um it's not like for me it's it's not the money at all because it's a funny story last year i actually actually quit for a week or two okay. i was doing really really well Con, like conor mcgregor yeah. announced your retirement actually, on twitter yeah like i, went, <laughs> I was going to go to jealous craig and work under one of the directors in Brunswick. Wow. So I thought it was a good opportunity. Yeah. And so money definitely wasn't the driving factor if I was making that move. Yeah. Um, but then I quickly realised that it definitely wasn't for me <laughs> and came, came back straight back. Um, lucky the door was left open. Wide open. <laughs> so what, what was it? What was the... Um, I'm really drawn to, like you, personal development. Yeah. So I thought working under a director would give me great skills to go on to do something else later. Yep. Um, if I'll do this for long term, who knows? But yeah. I my sort of end game would eventually be either maybe a management role within the company yeah. or maybe I, I really, really, I'm really keen on getting into property developing. Yeah. So that's what I'm sort of main drive. But my, as, an, as a model, like my dad worked really hard when he was young and he worked, he had his own company, he worked six, seven days a week. So I sort of seeing him mm. going up, it's, I, I just thought that's the norm. So Yeah. Mate, that's fantastic. And I, and, and I like that you said, you know, potentially, you know, it could be management or yeah. property development, but... You know, there, there, there always has to be that, that, that pull, that, yeah. that um, something to pull you forward, that yeah. motivation to move you forward. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, I'm constantly, myself, trying to balance being present, being in the here and now, yeah. being grateful for, for what I've got, but, um, you know, always having something to look forward to yeah. as well, always having something to work towards, you know, because if we're, if we're, not, we're not dying, we're, it's we're true. dying. And, it's um, true. You know, me personally, I'm, I'm, I'm driven by 
I, I just think human beings are extraordinary. I, I think I think seeing what some human human beings can achieve. Yeah. You know, someone out there like Elon Musk, yeah. who's you know sending people, trying to send people to Mars, launching rockets that are coming back down and landing and being reused. You know, advancing the uh, el electricity electrification of of vehicles, yeah. automobile vehicles. And he still finds time to run other side businesses. Like I, I look at human beings and I think they're incredible. And for me, it's it's not a, not one thing, but just to see what I what I'm capable of. Yeah. No, just to see way. just to see when this is all said and done, you know, to look back and say, you know, I was able to get the absolute most out of myself possible. Yeah. That that drives me forward. And you know, I love I love meeting you know people who are who are similar to that. So, yeah. You know, you, you reached out to me and, and Van Dana reached out to me and wanted to be involved uh, in doing something like this. And I, full, full marks to you, because yeah. it's not easy getting, getting, getting on a camera. So. Yeah, I'm not really used to it. So yeah, it's, oh, I feel a bit uncomfortable talking about numbers and stuff, to be honest, but yeah, no, it's, well, it's fine. Mate, you might have every sales manager in, uh, in Melbourne hitting you up, trying to get you on board, <laughs> so you, your stock might rise up. And say, <laughs> or no one watches this and, uh, <laughs> and no one will ring you. <laughs> No, no, that's awesome. That's good. Yeah. So, would you say that your old man's been one of your biggest mentors, or you know, who else? Who else yeah, yeah, for sure. A um, couple of family friends that own like companies that have done quite well. Sat mm. with them and, and picked their brain and just seeing what they've achieved. Obviously, motivates her people. I just finished reading Richard Branson's book, which is pretty amazing. Mm. He's, a, he's an amazing guy, like Elon Musk and the stuff that he's done, for example. Mm. Um, unbelievable. Yeah, for, for the world. So it's not just like immediate family or a book or someone that I've read I'm taking it's a bit of everyone to mix, yeah. um, you know if you think that you're, you're, you're the best and you get complacent then you'll, you'll quickly drop back down but it, it's I just keep talking to someone like yourself or someone else and just what are you doing good that I'm not doing yeah try it works works it doesn't do something else e every day is day one yeah huh? that's something that uh, Jeff Bezos says yeah. every every day is day one and Mate, I think I think the more people that you meet that are you know uber successful, you, you find that within them that they're not content. There is there is a piece of them that want to go a bit further. Well, a bit always further. want to go a bit further, and um, yeah, it's true. You know, it's amazing. I, I was uh, lucky enough to have a dinner with Gary V, and uh, I remember him saying, I "Saw your photo." Yeah, <laughs> oh, I like the man. I've seen him speak a few times. He, he's a superstar. Yeah. Like he's he's a beast. Like yeah. he, I look at him and I feel lazy. Yeah. Like I look at him and I I, I just feel lazy. I'm like Jesus. You are next level, mate. If I could, if I could be a quarter, uh, very motivated guy, right? Yeah, yeah. And he's helping so many people. Yeah. And um, he said something. He said, he goes, if there was a pill or or an injection or something that I could take that could take this ambition out of me yeah. and and calm me down, he goes, I'd con I'd strongly. He goes, I'm not saying I would take it. He goes, but I'm strongly consider taking it. He goes, this is something that is in me, and, and I can't help it. I just have to keep pushing forward yeah. and. and you know, the people like him, yeah, that he motivates me as well. I've read two of his books. Mm. It's very like, geared towards social media marketing. And, yeah. But he's, yeah, his videos are great. Yeah. So so we might see we might see you start to put out some content soon. I, I reckon I reckon you know the audience is out there would, would love to hear what you got to say. Yeah. Well, we're, I'm sitting with a guy uh, next week with um with my cadet Josh, one of his good mates who's very very good with um social media marketing. So. <laughs> We are looking to do something. Yeah. Um, I might pick your brain a bit and see. No worries, man. Any time. But I've seen a few of your drone videos. That look pretty cool. <laughs> um, I'm still trying to figure that thing out, mate. I'm telling you, it's the editor that is. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. The person behind the camera. We must say, congrat. Thank you too, because um, she's the one that makes those drone videos look good. Not, not me. Nah, that's good. Thank you, Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah. So so books, mentors. You know, if there was, if there was one book. Um, that you could give to your 18-year-old self or if there was one book that you could give to someone who, who um, said, mate, Jace, can you just give me yeah. one book to read to get me going? What, what would that one book be? I took a lot out of Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Uh, it's um, Stephen, Stephen, uh, Stephen Covey. Covey, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a yeah I, I took a lot out of that book. Yeah. Um, I'll probably take it a little bit slower to read books than most people because I have a few diaries. Like important books, I'm sort of trying to summarise key points. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, t tell us about that. Yeah, so I like really, really good books that I think they're going to take a lot out of or, mm. um, or geared toward my industry or something like that. Yeah. I, I have like a little diary and I'd summarise like 
maybe half of the diary of that book just to key points. So if I want to go back to the book, mm. I don't have to reread three, four hundred pages. I'm just going to read 20, 30 pages of the main points. It's a great little hack. Yeah, so I've done that. Um, I and that, has that formed some of your principles for, for selling and living? And yeah, yeah, no, I have, I've done that quite a bit. Yeah. Um, hacks, is all you want to know a few hacks too? Yeah, mate, tell, tell, um, well, I mean, you know, how, how, do you, how do you process that many deals in, you know, in such a short amount of time? Yeah. What? Um, we get, I've got a, a couple of assistants, not, not my cadet, um, so two, two girls who work with me here. Um, I'm trying to get one just to purely do back end paperwork mm -hmm. and then the other one to try to organise me mm -hmm. um, appointments and stuff. So they have so, sort of two separate jobs. Mm -hmm. um, how do we process that many deals? We get them in quick. Mm -hmm. So our sales manager had a, a report up. I think it's taken us 13 days on average from when we take a deposit mm -hmm. to get the whole file into the office. That's incredible. Yeah. But what would the, in the industry standard be much, much higher than that? Sometimes you hear things sitting there for four to six weeks. Yeah, it? so um, I think it's just, if you, if you leave things there too long, it yeah. happened to me in the past, you're sort of doing deals and forgetting about yeah. other ones, they've just, they got too much time to speak to other builders, friends, yeah. and then change their mind. Yeah. But if, if you sort of guide them the right way, yeah, yeah. and start getting things quickly. Especially now, right? Uh, yeah. Explain the process from the deposit. Yeah. The next step from here is, we put the paperwork in, it's gonna take three weeks to get a contract. Yeah. Make sure you have your five percent ready yep. at contract. So you're sort of laying foundations there, not just contract comes. Have you got five percent? Yeah. You're gonna be like, what? So, so organisation is a key part yeah. of your success, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I'm. If you ask my sales manager, I could be very disorganised, but that's why the girls are there. <laughs> so I don't think the organisation is my strong point. Right. That's why I have them there. I think sales is my strong point. Yeah. So I'm just trying to focus purely. On that side, and I don't really want to do much paperwork myself. Yeah, no, it's, nice. <laughs> so, um, it's good. Yeah, that, that's good, mate. It, it sounds like you, you you're doing really well, really yeah. really well. And what about um, difficult situations, mate? How do you, how do you deal with difficult situations, difficult customers? Yeah. How do you deal with stressful situations? It, it really depends on, on on the conversation, how how the situation goes. But I think um, a deal is never dead. Like if someone. It happened to me. It happened I, to love, me. I love this. I love this. I, I, it happened to me two days ago, and like a girl goes, oh, I've already deposited with another builder since we've spoken last time. Um, I go, Oh, congratulations on, on the builder. I don't even know who the builder is, but how big, how big is the house, by the way? I said, Oh, 32 squares. And I'm like, What would what, what the contract price come to? You must be happy with, with the whole overall process and the build. It's at 4 30. I go, Oh, beautiful. I go, would you be interested in just sitting down to an informal conversation if I could tell you the same floor, a similar floor plan, same size, would finish at 3.30? I'm like, well, that's, that's, I guess I can guarantee you 80 to 100K saving, but it's up to you. If you're happy with where you are, stay there. Yep. But if you're open to a conversation which potentially saves you 80 to 100K, yep. what, do you, what do you think? Well, they're coming on Sunday, so it's just... That's it, awesome. It doesn't matter if the deposit was someone else, and it's not... I'd never ever bad now on the builder. Yeah. I just get the information, the size of the house, price point, what they've got included, and then just match it up to something similar. And, and mate, people can feel that. Sure. We they would understand that you want to get the sale yeah. for, for your company. Yeah. But you've you've come from a place of, hey, I'm willing to assist you here. Yeah. If at very least I can spare some of my time to go through this with you and confirm that you're happy with Let's see. who you've chosen, yeah. then so be it. I mean I think that's there's, there's a couple of key lessons in that, mate. And the first one is, like you said, a deal is never dead. Yeah. And it's it's amazing on it's amazing about how many people would just let that go. Yeah. I remember when I first started as um as an associate. Funny story. Um, some uh, people I was at Highlands Craigieburn, not yeah. far from here, yeah. and they had the cafe there. And a lot of people would come in and say, "Oh, uh, do you have any established houses?" So two or three times. That happened and I'm like, oh, I better go get some established real estate agent yeah. cards and give them out. So they come in and say, you've got any established houses? I'm like, no, but give this real estate agent a call. Yeah. And then one day someone came in and goes, oh, uh, do you have any established houses? And I'm like, what am I doing? Why am I giving real estate agents cards? Yeah. So I'm like, oh, do you mind if I ask why you're looking at established? Yeah. And uh, we, we got talking, we sat down, we spent about an hour and a half going through their needs yeah. and took them out to show them a block of land and I got the sale on the spot then and there, they took a deposit 
And from that moment on, that was, I would say that was the turning point in my sales career. That yeah. was when I realized I did that. Different approach, yeah. I, I, I did that. They came in looking for an established home. Yeah. We have the power to influence when we give a shit. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. When we, when we actually give a damn, we have the power to influence. And, you know, they were happy and it was a win for us. Yeah. And, um, that changed everything for me, mate. Like, yeah. I, I had no idea I could sell to that moment. It, it happens it's quite a bit. It's just how long sort of can you hang in there in the conversation, see what they're really looking for, because it, it's not just price point. Like, we are a price point builder, yeah. but it's the consultant, mm -hmm. how committed they are. If something goes wrong with construction, even though it's not construction, your sales, yeah. will, will you still get involved and try and fix it for them? Yeah. Um, then they'll respect, respect that. It's... So it's a consultant, the price, yep. the company behind it. Yep. Um, it's, a, it's a lot of factors. Yep. So you, you're going into that. Yeah. You, you're always going into that. You're yep. always pushing it forward. Mate, that's, that's, that's incredible. Yep. Yeah. Mate, I've, I've loved chatting with you and, um, you know, I, I'd love to do this again. Yep. And, uh, I, you know, I want to check in with you at the end of this year and just see how no you finished off. Um, but I reckon, you know, how old are you? If you don't mind like 28. 28, yeah. You know, so, so young in, in this industry and, and achieving some, some awesome results and I think people young and old could really learn a thing or two from you so no, well, well done I appreciate it thanks for your time do you want to give us a bit of a tour of the house no worries All right. awesome come through so this is the Sapphire 28 this is a, we just won an award for it before Christmas the best display under 250,000 so it comes in, in two different ways so this is master to the front rumpus to the back this is obviously the master bedroom you have your, your ensuite here, your walk in row, double vanity, shower, and then separate toilet. So, this, this house has a few little niches and linen closets off to the side. So, there's a little standard niche here, has a walk in closet for a linen. And this is the kitchen here, which is quite nice and unique. It's got three separate bench spaces, which we can move the sink and the dishwasher to that, to that wall that people like. Um, Butler's pantry. This is our second, second most sold house for me personally. And then we have a rumpus up to the back. It's quite nice, so it's like a dual, dual living area. The yeah, alfresco attached to the side as well. Then off, off the hallway here we have all the bedrooms. So bedroom two is, is quite a big bedroom. It's it's actually 3.9 meters, so it's it's quite a large bedroom. We have another, another linen with a laundry off to the side. And then we have a bathroom and a, and a separate toilet also. So mate, I mean one, one question I didn't ask you before. Yep. What what are um, we'll come at you. What what are what are three things or, or what are Give, give us some tips for the anyone who's looking to buy a new house. I mean, what's most important for them to know at the moment? Anyone who's looking to buy a house or is shopping in the yeah. market for a house, what must they know? Well, I, I think obviously finance now. Yeah. What's happening with the Royal Commission? Um, some people come in and I can easily take their deposit and I'm not now. Yeah. Because I want them to be finance approved. Yeah. So I think number one would definitely be finance, finance, finance approved. Yep. Um, on top of that, I think you really, really need to have a strong foundation with your family behind you. Yep. So people come in normally and it's just on their own. I'm like, who's the decision maker? Is it you or, or your wife? Yeah, right. So I get them all in because even the kids, like I, I just sold a double story house and it was the little child, little daughter, was her pushing the, the parents. They wanted a single, but they end up getting a double for the daughter. That's incredible. Yeah. So I think... My, my, my latest cancellation, funny you say, my latest cancellation, the mum came in chose the block, put the deposit down for the son. Yeah. A week later, the son came in and cancelled because he wasn't happy with it. Yeah. So I didn't. I, I probably should have at that time said, hang on, you know, maybe we should get your son in to have a look at this. So that, yeah. that's, that's an awesome bit of insight yeah. to, to have all the decision makers there because 
they and, and the guy told me he goes yeah I go your mum must be disappointed yeah and uh, he goes yeah we actually had an argument about it so that that is a really important piece um, of information so anyone who's shopping for a new home get your husband get your wife get your brother get your daughter get anyone who's gonna be yeah. living in the house who's gonna be involved in that decision get them involved in the process it's going to save angst later and if everyone's on the same page it's going to help you through that process of shopping with a new home that's an awesome one yeah mate. And i think the third thing would be um making sure sorry mate, making sure when you're you're buying a home knowing what's not included yeah so it's it's very easy to, to sell a house and keep the price point down yep. but do they know it doesn't come with with brick infills yep. do they know these little things does it, does it have tall and tower holders yeah because some people are just obviously selling to get a sale and make money yeah but that's really not the right thing to do because you're not going to get a referral yep. six months down the track, 12 months because they're not going to be happy with the bill. So making sure they really know everything. Fencing, landscaping is not included. So you, you tell them up front, yep. this is what's included and this is what's not included yep. rather than letting them find that out for themselves yep. later on. So we, our displays, a lot of them are actually positioned like that. So in here, for example, there's a tile shower base at the front, it's not in the second room. So we can actually walk through and be like, that's, that's what the standard is. Here is what it is when it's upgraded. But I think it is important. Otherwise, you will get a pretty bad name pretty quick and it will travel, so. It's a great piece of advice. Yeah. Three great pieces of advice for anyone out there looking um, at buying a new home. Let's continue the tour. Beautiful. All right, so through the hallway here, so we've seen the bathroom and the toilet. Um, we have the third and then the fourth bedroom, which complete the house, so. Thanks a lot. Thanks, thanks for the tour. Thank you. <laughs>